Today we are making a reflective address sign. Hey guys, we got a lot of great projects coming up you don't want to miss. So if you haven't subscribed yet, click that little bell icon and the subscribe button so you don't miss out because we got some really cool stuff coming up. We get requests on a regular basis. How do we make glow in the dark reflective kind of signs? Well, this seemed like the perfect opportunity to make one for us. We live out here in the middle of the desert. We are miles from any street lights. So I wanted to make something that was reflective. These are letters or numbers that dad did years ago, but you can't necessarily see these at night. So this thing is reflective with glass beads. So when lights shine on it, it returns the light to that source. So let's get this thing going. So we're using six inch numbers and the Clarendon really are my favorite. But unfortunately, because we just have kind of a narrow board here, I went ahead and switched over to the universal numbers and they fit a lot better, especially since I'm gonna do these outset and I wanna do a lot of background. So the universal make it much easier to do that. So dad's making marks on top and bottom to make sure he gets even spacing. And then he's making marks on the left and right of the letters. Now these are the ones that are really important. You wanna make sure you have even spacing because if that line is off, then your vertical sign is gonna go at an angle and that just looks funky. Then once he has his letters all laid out or numbers, then he sprays it with his primer and make sure not to overspray because this is pine and it will bleed. The first bit we're using is the profile bit at a quarter of an inch deep. Now, if you haven't been following us for a while, this is the most versatile bit we have, and it's probably the one we use the most. I'll leave a link in the description below for everything that you see here today. What he's doing is he's going around each individual letter and giving a nice fat line. Now, we're gonna bolden that line up with another bit after this is done, but you wanna make sure that you just move nice and slow and work your way in towards the number or letter, whatever you're carving. Don't try to get it all perfect on the first shot. There's quite a bit of room for error when doing this. The next bit we're using is the new 3 8 90 degree bit. Now we do all of our background, well almost all of our background, with our regular quarter inch 90 degree. But this particular bit, it's new to our arsenal and me and dad just fell in love with it. This thing cuts like a hot knife through butter and it gives that same look, you can get the same texture for it, but man, it cuts your time in half. The only thing is, you really gotta be careful if you're not used to it because you will go right through any of your carving and not even notice it. You'll notice that dad isn't going around each individual number. He's going around all four numbers as a whole. That's how he's creating that cloud look. It's just not super wide. He's basically following the line that's already there, just making it wider, and everything inside of that cloud that's black, he's taken out. And with this new bit, it's done in no time. There's all kinds of different jigs out there to help you get the perfect rounded corner. But for a sign like this, all you really need is a disc sander. Dad's just putting it up against the far end of the sander and moving it back and forth. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it, it's pretty simple. The last bit we're using today is our 45 degree chamfer bit. Now Dad's measuring based on the board that he has. There's really no way to get a good idea of what the chamfer will like using our depth gauge. So he's putting a nice deep chamfer on the front of this and then he's also going to put a small chamfer on the back, mainly to take off any sharp edges. And I think it gives it a smooth look. Then 
Do not forget to brush out your sign when you're done. Get all that excess sawdust out of there. Once your sign's all blown off and you got all the sawdust out, then we're just going to spray the edges black with our primer and we're going to spray all the inside of the cloud black. Now remember, like I said before, don't overspray, otherwise you're going to deal with some bleeding. After the primer dries, which takes like three or four minutes, it's super fast. Then dad's using an 80 grit disc on the disc sander, which if you guys haven't tried this thing, you really want to get one. They are amazing. Then he's going to follow back and get a smooth finish with the 120 grit on the random orbital. This is the Rust-Oleum Clear that we always use and we usually use it for interior signs. So this sign will actually be a good test of how this stuff holds up outside. I'm really happy with the way this came out. I wasn't sure exactly how it was gonna look, but that big 90 degree bit, uh, I really like the way it works. Now this has got, I think seven or eight coats of the clear on it. We're gonna paint these numbers white, then we're gonna do something special to make it reflective. We're trying this new Ronin one stroke paint and it actually works just as good as one shot and I think it's quite a bit cheaper. We're going to use it a little bit more before we really give it our full, I don't know what you want to call it, endorsement. Um, but for this sign, it seemed to work out really well. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it set for about an hour. Then when we come back, we're gonna put some reflective glass bead on here. Now the reason I'm letting it set is because if I put it on now, especially because I put the paint on so thick that that glass bead would sink all the way in to that paint. Sinks all the way in, then that glass won't be protruding beyond the surface of the paint and it defeats the whole purpose. We're gonna let this set exactly 60 minutes and we're gonna come back and we're gonna sprinkle some glass bead on there. So stick with us. So I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna get some of this glass bead. It's not very expensive and it works really well. Now what we should have done is used a salt shaker. Dad said that that's how grandpa used to do this and it would have given a much more even uh, coverage on each one of the letters, but this ended up working. Don't worry about sprinkling too much because you can save anything that's not stuck to the paint. That's why dad's using a piece of paper right here because we're gonna dump all the rest into that paper and then put it back in the can to reuse again. Then we used our air compressor to remove any of the glass bead that kind of stayed inside the carving. You just want to go really, really light with it. It doesn't take much pressure to get that stuff out of there. Then all we had to do is mount it on the mailbox. Now the video doesn't show it, but we did drill pilot holes to make sure we didn't get any splitting or cracking. There it is, guys. Uh, I, I really love the way this thing came out. Those universal numbers, I really like those things. I might like those a little bit better than the Clarendon. They're very readable, they show up great. Anyway, I hope this was helpful, guys. Everything we use today will be descriptions down below. If you guys have any questions, please email me, eric at makeawoodsign.com. We love you guys, we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.